Hey folks, I'm Matt from Fidel Gastros and I've partnered with Interact to bring you this sponsored video to help answer some of your small business questions. I asked you great people who've been following my journey to send me some questions and I'm going to do my best to answer them based on my experiences. But disclaimer, just because I say something, it is not Bible. It might have worked for me, it might not work for you. It might not have worked for me, it might work great for you. But I'm just going to share my experiences because I've been lucky enough to make some mistakes but then have an opportunity to learn from them. Well that's my story, but now I want to hear yours because this video is Keeping Up With The Questions. Like most small business owners, I've made a few mistakes along the way, but I've been lucky enough to be able to learn from them and apply and it's made me a better business owner because of it. You know, But I, I wish, I wish I had someone with me along the way kind of coaching me through saying like, hey Matt, maybe you should look at getting business insurance or Hey Matt, maybe selling sandwiches off a random table at a convention center, not the best idea. Or, hey Matt, in between a prep day and event day, try going to bed. Stuff like that. All right, so if you don't know my story from the beginning, I'm gonna give you the Cole Zones version right now. I was a copywriter like seven, seven and a half years ago that wanted to get into food. So I wrote a business plan. I came up with this idea for Fidel Gastro's as a, as a sandwich shop. So I walked into the bank, pitched my idea and they rejected me and they were like, mm, get some experience kid. And I was like, oh, I got experience. And then, so really what I did was I just rejigged the idea that instead of opening up a shop, I came up with this pop-up concept. So I started doing pop-ups all over the city. From there we got the food truck and then the food truck turned into the restaurant, did a little TV, some cookbooks, grew a huge catering business out of it. Now we do quick service spots all over the city. So it's really been seven years of just natural growth and headaches, natural growth and headaches. Ashley asked the first question was, how do you keep track of everything when you have multiple businesses, staff, scheduling, etc.? Well, so technically it's one business with multiple spokes. There's the restaurant, the food truck, catering, offsite stuff. And basically three things that we do that I think keep everything super organized. So the first is meetings. We bring everyone together, all the managers every week, and we look at the next two to three weeks worth of business and figure out how each other's roles really affect uh, that organization. It allows our team to say, hey, do we need to hire more? Do we need to order more? Do we need to cut back? You know, what do we do in this scenario or that scenario? Obviously everything's very specific, but it's really an opportunity for everyone to come together, get all their questions out there. That way everyone knows how their role is affected by someone else. So the second point is systems. Uh, and a lot of that can now be digitized, which is great because on your phone or on a tablet, you can see everything that's happening. Scheduling, like someone calling sick today or someone forgot to punch out. Or then the other side is, oh, I need to order more of this because we're running out of stock. And then, ah, oh, we send out some invoices and some accounts payable came in. All quickly accessible information. That way, you know, you know exactly what's happening. The third thing is accountability. So once you've done one and two, you can now go back and say, oh, you know what? There were some holes here or I can flag this or flag that. And then when you have those weekly meetings, you can actually bring up those points. Because yeah, a lot of what we talk about is the future, but sometimes you have to look at what you've done Correct that. All right, question number two comes from Amanda. She says, how do you manage cash flow in your small business? That's the, uh, that's the toughest thing you'll ever have to do. So I mean, the most important thing is you wanna be able to track the money that's coming in and the money that's going out. So for example, when checks are out in the world, you're like, when's it gonna clear? When's it gonna clear? When's it gonna come in? I don't know what's going on. Oh my God, my cash flow, my cash flow. The easiest way to just get rid of all that is using Interact e-transfers. So for example, if I wanna pay rent, I send the money. You know, and at the end of the day, stuff happens all the time. And if I'm out of town and there's an unforeseen business expense that needs to be covered, instead of worrying, I can just send my staff money via Interact e-transfer. They can take that, go buy what they need to, and then my bookkeeper has a record of all of it. So she can match the receipt with the transaction. Then there's the accounts payable side. So it's like, if I did a massive catering and I'm waiting for a check to first get mailed to me, then I have to wait for it to actually clear in my account before I have access to the funds you're looking at like five to 10 business days. But if a client says, hey, I'm gonna send you the money via Interact e-transfer, it's great. It takes two seconds to come to me, two seconds to go in the account, everyone's breathing. So now Interact actually has a brand new tool uh, called the Request Money feature, where basically it consolidates your invoicing and your accounts receivable. It attach an invoice to a request, it'll have the invoice number, and then the client can pay directly to that invoice through Interact e-transfer which is great because not only does it keep invoicing and payments together, but it keeps my bookkeeper really happy. We interrupt this program to bring you a special report. Are you at the restaurant now? Yeah. Um, so do you want to just go grab it from Lala's and then I'll just send you, send you the money? Okay, just text me your email, okay? Okay, bye. There you go. 
using Interact eTransfer in the middle of the video about Interact eTransfer. All right, question number three is from Jasmine, uh, and she asks, it's a long question. All right, so let me break this down, this question down into all the different parts. So uh, the first part, did, it, did you find it hard for people to get interested in teaming up with you uh, even though you didn't have a culinary arts degree? Well, I think having a culinary degree or a diploma is incredibly important because it teaches you the fundamentals and all the things you should know when you walk into a kitchen. Uh, and it teaches you how to cook, which you need to know how to do if you're gonna get into the food business. But I think it's also just one aspect of what all the tools that you need to have when starting your business. So yes, can you cook? Great, check mark. What's the other thing? Oh, you have a great idea? Fantastic, check. You know, Is this person hardworking and motivated? Yeah, so these are all great tools to have when you have your business. I think to get someone interested in that is you have all these things. You are a great cook, you have great ideas. You're incredibly motivating. You have a great work ethic. It's like people become attracted to uh, all this positivity that you have. Uh, okay, so the second point is you minored in culinary arts with a major in business. First off, I didn't even know you could do that. Uh, it's a great thing to have, so that's kudos to you. Uh, and you've been told for years that you should buy a food truck since uh, you cook so well. So I think, stop right there. So before you actually buy this food truck, which Yes, it's not as expensive as a restaurant, but it's still a considerable, considerable investment. Work backwards. You know, yes, it's great that your friends and family love your food, but what about people you don't know? Have you just randomly cooked at a market event or had an opportunity to showcase what you create for someone that's never heard of you before because you need honest opinions. You don't need the people who love you telling you how much they love you. You know, you, you know that. Yes, my mom has always loved my food, whether she ate meat or not, but I needed to know that Joe, somebody who's never heard of me before at a market, picks up my sandwich and goes, oh my goodness, where has this been all my life? That's what you need. So I would start there first. From there, you can build a following, build a bit of a brand, keep developing your recipes, and then when you feel like the stars have aligned, then you can start looking at a food truck. Also, maybe try working on a food truck first because so many people buy food trucks and then they'll be like, how do I drive this thing? <laughs> it's like, how do I turn it on? It's like. You know, basics, start from the beginning. Work on a food truck. Make sure you actually enjoy it because it's a tight quarters. Like, it's hot in there. It's super hot in there. Uh, after a decade of riding out a desk, I'm ready, just need to get investors and capital, LOL, and a truck. <laughs> if you feel that you are doing a job that you are just not motivated by and you're so passionate about this other thing, then yeah, you should go for it. Start a business plan, figure out exactly what you want to create, how you want to create it, and then the necessary steps afterwards to kind of build that into an actual business. Next question. Michael asks, even though you have one now, how about more Rebel Without a Kitchen? I loved season two when you traveled to different cities. Michael, I agree. Come on, Netflix, if you're watching, bring us back. No, uh, Rebel Without a Kitchen was great. Um, I think I've actually noticed more benefits to the business now versus when we actually made the show, mainly because, yeah, you're right, I traveled to a lot of cities, which meant I was being taken away for my other business. So it was really hard to keep my finger on the business at the time because people are saying all the time, come to our city and come showcase the kind of food you create and bring your, your energy and all that stuff. So I love to travel. It's how I've continued to learn in this industry, specifically recipes. Because I'm not formally trained as a cook, the more traveling I do, the more I feel like I'm learning and trying food and coming up with new ideas and then figuring out a way to make them work. So I think, yeah, I think doing another season of the show or a show like that just mean a little continued education. Plus it's fun, I had a fun time. Next question, Ted, he talks about financing. He goes, I run a fairly successful catering company called Mama D's Delicious Eats, but now need investment to help grow to meet our full potential. So I used uh, a two-prong method and you can use both. You can use one or the other. It's personal investment. So finding someone to invest in your business and partner with you or getting a small business loan through your bank, or maybe it's a combination of the two, and there's pros and cons to both. Sometimes having a partner is fantastic, but you need to know ahead of time what their role is. Is it purely financial? Are they actually gonna bring new business to your business and kind of make things come together? If you do go the small business loan route, just keep in mind that banks have stricter guidelines for lending money out to small businesses, so just make sure you have everything orders so that you can present uh, a better case to them. And just also keep in mind that the money doesn't always come very quickly. So if you need it fast, that might not be your best option. I did both things together. Right, we had personal investors, Kai and Dom, and the small business loan. All right, so next question's coming from Joe. 
and he says, how do you keep your restaurant and your food truck moving efficiently? Seems like there'd be a lot of balls in the air. Uh, what are your tips for running? Uh, running them both. Great question. Uh, two part answer. The first thing is your team. You need a rock star team that believe in what you believe. That way when they deal with their customers, they feel like they love what you're doing and they want to come back. So then the other aspect is efficiencies on payments. So for example, you come up to my truck and there's a hundred people in line and it's like I'm making sandwiches but I can only go so quickly. I got to figure out other ways to save time. So using a tool like Interact Flash for bills under hundred bucks means I can save like seven to 10 seconds per transaction. That might not sound like a lot of time, but over a five hour period or six hour period when you're doing a thousand covers, it all adds up and it makes it much easier on you. All right, last question. Uh, Christopher asks, thinking back to when you made the decision to leave your corporate job and start a pop-up, how did you overcome the uncertainty if you were thinking, if you were making the right decision? Also, any tips for anyone with no professional food experience looking to get into the game? I didn't love my job. Like, I don't think there was anything wrong with it. I just, it wasn't for me. And that's kind of where everything started. So you start thinking, okay, well, if this job isn't for me, what would I be really happy doing? What do I love? I love food and I use that as kind of my segue into starting a food business. As far as fear of making mistakes or you know overcoming those obstacles, I think one of the benefits of being a small business owner who's never really worked in that industry is that you're kind of impervious to it. You just kind of work through the stress and you work through the obstacles because you're so determined on achieving what you set out to do. And, Sometimes that means success, sometimes that means small little failures along the way, but at the end of the day, if you love it and you really want to do it, you will find a way to make it work. I think the word is grit. We talk about grit all the time, right Kai? Grit. If you have a little bit of grit, you'll figure out a way to make it happen. Well, there you have it, folks. Keeping up with the question, small business edition in partnership with Interact. Now, go get them, tiger and or tigers, because you might be more than one person. Anyways, thanks so much for watching. Leave a like and a subscribe. And if you have another question that didn't come up in this video, leave it down in the comments and I'll answer. Be sure to check out the link below in the description to find out how Interact eTransfer can be a great tool for your small business.